Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Poison Apple, a spellbinder story. An original story written for you by Molly Murphy, writer, producer, and composer for Dork Tale Storytime. Thanks! Enjoy the episode! The Poison Apple, a spellbinder story. Keep up, Alice, keep up! Octavia shouted as she leapt gracefully across the crowded city streets, soaring over sidewalk clutter and dashing through the legs of passers-by. I'm running as fast as I can! Alice huffed and puffed behind her, slightly less graceful and way less enthused than her cat companion. This is the first lead we've had on the apple in years, Alice. We can't let them get away! I'm right behind you. Alice got out the words and then willed the rest of her energy into her legs, pumping her arms wildly to keep Octavia in her sights. As she barreled down the streets, bumping into and apologizing to countless innocent bystanders, Alice gritted her teeth and wondered how she ever let herself get into this mess in the first place. The answer, of course, is that one day, many months ago, Alice stumbled upon a secret organization called the Spellbinders. The Spellbinders work out of a warehouse called Ever After that's disguised as an ordinary home in an ordinary neighborhood. They consider themselves collectors, albeit unusual ones. Spellbinders find magical items that are born from powerful stories, and they return those objects to their shelves so they can live happily in Ever After. This is how they can be sure the magic doesn't grow too unwieldy out in the world. Alice was welcomed into this secret organization by a talking cat named Octavia. Naturally. And now, after a successful round of training and early missions, like collecting Little Red's Riding Hood at a local school, Octavia and Alice were off once again, seeking a particularly elusive item that had slipped through the grasp of many a spellbinder before them. Octavia was hot on the heels of their target, a fleeing figure dressed in deep purples and silver. The figure made a sharp turn into an alley, and the cat did not miss a beat. She slid into the alley herself, narrowly avoiding a collision with a trash bin. A trash bin that Alice, not built to adjust her speed and direction on a dime like Octavia, ran into moments later. She toppled the bin and its contents across the alley landing with a thud at the feet of the cat. Octavia just glared down at Alice, sprawled across the cobblestones. How nice of you to join me, she said playfully, hopping onto Alice's chest and taking a seat. She swished her tail jovially as Alice reached an arm up to pat the top of her head. Did you catch them? Alice asked. Alas, I did not. So all that running was for nothing? I wouldn't say that, Octavia replied, hopping off Alice and staring deeper into the alleyway. Alice peeled herself off the ground, dusting herself off and turning to look in the same direction as Octavia. Instead of a wall or fence, the end of the alley was a large, swirling portal. It hummed with a strange magic, glittering silver and violet in the otherwise dark side street. No one else that walked by seemed to take notice of the vibrant doorway that had just opened in the middle of the afternoon. That didn't surprise Alice. She was one of the few people in the world who was able to see and sense magic around her, which is part of why the Spellbinders recruited her. She had had so many incredible, magical experiences over these months with Octavia. And after all of it, after all of the odd adventures that left her in awe, She stared into this portal of new possibilities, and only one thought entered her mind. There is no way we're going into that thing, she exclaimed, and she scooped Octavia up into her arms. Unhand me, Alice, Octavia shouted in return. Nope, not jumping into a big purple mass. We're not doing it. But we have to, Alice. It's our job. We have no idea where it goes. Oh, Alice, when do we have any idea where we're going? 
Remember when we had to climb that beanstalk? Which we wouldn't have had to do if you had taken me seriously about the beans in the first place, Alice replied. But it wouldn't have been nearly as much fun. If Octavia could roll her eyes, she would be doing it now. Plus, we have to find the apple. It's the final item of... Of the evil three, I know, I know, Alice cut in, furrowing her brow. The spinning wheel that pricked a finger, the rose that cursed a castle, and the most elusive of all, the poisonous red apple. The spellbinders managed to collect the first two items, but the apple was the hardest to lock down. Its magic was fed by powerful emotions, envy, bitterness, and trickery. This made it a far more challenging artifact to acquire. The apple didn't want to be found. I know we have to find it, Octavia, but I still don't think we should run into a weird portal. Weird portals are never good. Plus, Alice thought to herself, it's bad enough that my moms are always worried about me after finding out about my new part-time job. How will I ever explain the whole jumped through a mysterious portal thing? As if reading her mind, which Alice believed wasn't totally out of the question, Octavia peered into Alice's eyes and said, We don't have to tell anyone about this. We'll be in and out with the apple in no time. Alice narrowed her eyes at the grinning cat. That's what you said when we followed that yellow brick road that showed up behind the bagel place near my school. We were gone for two weeks. True. But in the real world, it was only two hours. Now stop bringing up examples and let's go. Last one through the portal has to do inventory alone for a week. Alice couldn't help but laugh. Then she sighed. And knowing that she wasn't going to win this particular argument any time soon, she backed up, bent her knees, took a deep breath, and ran straight towards the portal, with Octavia still in her arms. Both Octavia and Alice yelped as they fell down, 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 and down some more. They fell for what seemed like ages in a glittering whirlwind, and then they were spit out onto a soft surface somewhere far away from home. The two got on their feet and gasped at the new world around them. This was by far the most beautiful place they had ever fallen into. It was also a little spooky, but Alice was ignoring that for now. The two spellbinders found themselves in what was undoubtedly an enchanted forest. It was dusk, and the sky had a lilac hue. Large, looming trees with bright, shining apples stood tall around them, casting strange shadows across the ground where fantastical ferns grew and curled at their feet. Glowing moss and lazily floating fireflies lit a long path through the forest, which wound around to someplace unseen. You see, Octavia said smugly, if you hadn't listened to me, you never would have seen this beautiful landscape. Yeah, yeah, Alice replied. She smiled to herself. Well, I guess we better walk. Octavia took the lead and trotted down the winding path. They walked for a long while and noticed that the light never changed. They were in a state of perpetual dusk. Everywhere they looked, they saw trees with bright red apples. Alice inspected them as she walked, but knew none were the apple they hoped to collect. Do you think that whoever has the apple created this place? Alice asked the cat. Must have. The magic of all the items we collect is powerful enough to do things like this, but especially the ones driven by our toughest feelings. Whoever has the apple now, well, we should be prepared for anything. Hello, strangers, said a voice from the shadows. Ah! Octavia jumped so high in response that she almost landed in one of the lower branches of a tree. Prepared for anything, huh? Alice chuckled. Oh, hush. Octavia scolded. Who said that? Show yourself. Why, it's me, the tree. Sure enough, one of the trees on the side of the path had begun to transform, its bark taking the shape of a rather kind-looking tree creature. 
Octavia and Alice tentatively stepped forward. Once, twice, and then, out of an abundance of caution, they stopped some distance away from the tree's long branches. What business do you, a girl and a cat, have with the queen of all this and that? Under her breath, Octavia murmured, Oh no, the tree is rhyming. That's never a good sign. Alice replied, My life is so weird. We are looking for a very particular red apple. Not one of yours, though, good tree friend. Um, so we come from an organization. I mean, well, we saw someone fall through a portal, and I don't really know how to explain this situation to a tree. Alice said quietly, I think you did a great job. Ah, said the tree suddenly, making them both jump again. So, you wish to find the girl filled with sorrow. I'm afraid you'll have to come tomorrow. The girl filled with sorrow? What do you mean? Who is the girl with the apple? The queen with the apple created this place, so her everyday problems she won't have to face. Thus, her grand palace is a guest-free zone. Please retrace your steps and leave her alone. Suddenly, the roots of the trees around Alice and Octavia began to grow and burst out of the ground. Octavia sprung up quickly in response, straight into Alice's arms. Alice began sprinting away from the rhyming tree and couldn't help but remember one long week during her training to become a spellbinder. Octavia had her dashing, dodging, and rolling her way through various obstacle courses. At the time, she didn't see the purpose, but now she was grateful for the training as she narrowly avoided the grasping roots at her ankles. Aren't you glad I ran you through all those obstacle courses, Alice? Octavia called up from her arms. Alice was certain now. The cat could read her mind. Just as they thought they were clear of the worst of it, a large root crashed up out of the ground, ready to wrap around Alice and her cat partner. At the very last second, and with a silent look exchanged between the two of them, Octavia leapt out of Alice's arm in one direction, and Alice leapt in the other, and they rolled to safety. The root crashed down where they stood just a moment before, disappearing underground. The spellbinders stayed still as the forest grew quiet once again, and then finally found their way to the path. I think today holds the record for most falls on the job. Alice laughed while pulling leaves and twigs from her shirt and hair. Octavia purred in agreement. Onwards then? And with that, Alice and Octavia began journeying deeper into the forest. The path took them through many twists and turns. The trees seemed to only grow taller as they walked, looming above them and beginning to come together in a sort of archway. Alice could feel magic buzzing in her fingers and toes, propelling her forward. She had the sense that they were close to something massive, a very powerful fairy tale artifact. She knew without a doubt that they were just a few steps away from that poisonous red apple. But first, the gargoyles. Of course, Alice thought to herself, shrugging in Octavia's direction. The archway of trees had led them directly to the foot of a small castle, the towers and walls made of twisting vines, glowing moss, and the branches of apple trees. On either side of a tall oak door sat two gargoyles, also made from the branches of trees, leafy wings tucked in at their sides. They sat perfectly still until Alice and Octavia approached. Visitors at the castle, one said in a booming voice. How unusual, said the other. The queen is not taking any visitors today. Turn around from whence you came. We need to speak to the queen as soon as possible. The apple she's been using is very dangerous, and we just want to help her, Alice pleaded with the two beasts. The gargoyles shared a look and then regained their composure. Before you can go any further, you must pass our riddles three. Yes, and your answers will decide your destiny, the second gargoyle decreed. Oh no, more rhyming. Octavia said with a shudder. One of us never tells a lie. 
and one of us always tells the truth. The first gargoyle looked exasperated at the second. It tried to mutter under their breath, but their voices were still loud enough for Octavia and Alice to hear. Gary, I told you that's not how it goes, said the gargoyle on the right. What do you mean, Larry? replied the one on the left. Well, we just said the exact same thing, said Larry. Hmm, I don't think so, Larry. I said one of us tells the truth and you said never lies, and that's different. Gary, how many times do we have to go over this? As their bickering grew louder, Alice motioned to the door with a nod of her head, and Octavia winked in confirmation. The two began sneaking past the gargoyles, inspecting the door up close. Over here, Octavia whispered quietly. I found a small crack in the door. I can sneak in and unlatch that window up there from the inside. All you have to do is climb. I'm on it, Alice replied. Do not fall again. Noted. Alice smirked and began climbing as Octavia scuttled through the crack. She quietly searched for footholds in the twists and turns of the tree trunks and branches of the castle, scaling nearly effortlessly to the window one story above. There was one slightly tricky section when she accidentally snapped a twig. Gary and Larry abruptly stopped bickering below and looked around, confused at the sudden absence of the girl and the cat. Alice flattened herself against the wall, hoping that they wouldn't decide to look up. She only began moving again when the creatures below resumed their fight. Octavia was already waiting with the window unlatched, standing effortlessly on a beam. Alice climbed inside, and the two made their way down to the ground once again. They saw that they had stepped into, well, climbed into, a grand entryway. More magical trees lined the entry on either side of them, leafless but with pristine apples at the ends of their branches. The ground was made of the same moss and ferns from outside, but somehow Alice felt as though their footsteps echoed. They cautiously marched through the passage until finding themselves at the foot of the largest tree they'd seen since entering this alternate dimension. This tree was the only one with leaves, so dark green they almost looked black. They hung low like a canopy over a throne that was carved into the trunk near the bottom. Sitting atop a throne at the end of this long hallway was a girl about Alice's age. She had on long purple robes that hung to her ankles, hair pulled into a bun atop her head, and a stern look etched across her face. Alice could tell this was not her normal look, and that more than this castle had been transformed by the bright red apple clutched tightly in the girl's two hands. Hello, my name is Alice. This is my cat Octavia. We're here to help you, Alice called up to the girl. Octavia hopped up into Alice's arms and then climbed to perch around her shoulders. I don't need any help. I told you to stay away. The girl clutched the apple tighter to her body. So the rhyming tree and the gargoyles were her doing, Alice thought to herself. That apple needed to get to Ever After as soon as possible. The item you're holding might be having a pretty bad and very powerful effect on you. All we want to do is take the apple and make sure you're okay, Alice countered. Octavia added, Did something difficult happen to you recently? Something you're hoping to avoid? I don't have to tell you anything, the girl shouted. She held the apple up high, and the tree castle began to shake and come to life around them. The apple lost its red sheen and turned an inky black in her hand. Whatever is going on, I'm sure it seems bad right now, but I promise we can help you figure it all out. Together, Octavia yelled. In Alice's ear, she whispered, just keep talking to her. Then she crept down from Alice's shoulders and bounded through the moving branches and roots into the darkness. Please tell us what's going on. I promise you we're friends, and we just want to take you home to make sure you're safe. I don't want to go home. I'm struggling in school while my perfect sister is getting straight A's. I never know where to sit at lunch, and it feels like everyone is always ignoring me. 
I can't figure out what I'm good at, but everyone else seems to know exactly what they're supposed to be doing all the time. I try and try, but I feel like no one even notices me. Everything has just been so hard, and I don't want to deal with it anymore. With each declaration, she seemed to grip the apple more tightly, causing more tremors in the ground beneath Alice. I understand. I promise I do. But trust me, these magical items don't really solve any problems. They only make more problems. What's your name? Alice took a small step forward, looking up sincerely into the girl's eyes. Neve. My name is Neve. Neve, listen. We see you, and we're here for you. We love to help people, and sometimes when we're having a hard time, having friends to hear you out is the best antidote. I don't know exactly what you need, but it's definitely not a poisonous apple, though. That I can guarantee. Alice could see that Octavia had gotten closer to Neve as they spoke. She was up in a branch over Neve's hand. It seemed like the branch was trying to toss her down to the ground, but Octavia's cat Grace was coming in handy again. She gripped the branch with her clawed paws and waited for the exact right second to get to the apple. Alice slowly began walking forward. If you drop the apple, I promise that's the first step to feeling better. Alice put on her warmest, most friendly, most genuine smile. She really did relate to Neve. Sometimes things just pile up so much that you're unsure what next step to take. She could see why you might fall for the call of the poisonous apple and its tricky promises. Neve looked at Alice, and Alice could have sworn she saw the girl falter. Her eyes grew softer and her hand relaxed for a fraction of a second. Alice's eyes darted quickly to Octavia, but the cat already noticed and jumped from the branch with a paw outstretched, ready to do one of the things that cats do best. Swat! Time seemed to slow down as Octavia reached the apple and swatted with her small paw so it would fly in Alice's direction. Alice threw off her backpack and had her hands inside of the top pocket, She procured a large book with the words Snow White scrawled across the cover in fancy silver cursive. She tore it open and it glowed golden with light. Another portal, but this time one that would take the final item of the evil three to ever after for good. She had the book out just in time and rushed forward to catch the apple inside. It landed perfectly in the center and disappeared in a swirl of fairy dust. Alice let out a breath of relief as she safely tucked the book into her backpack. We did it, she shouted merrily. Oh, I don't think we're done just yet, Octavia yelled. Neve, are you a fast runner? Before Alice or Neve could answer, Octavia bounded for the door of the castle. It didn't take Alice long to figure out why. The entire place was collapsing. With the apple gone, the magic was beginning to disappear. Neve and Alice started chasing after Octavia, and all three rushed through the entryway. They ran through the forest, dodging falling apples and large roots rising through the earth. They ran the fastest they had all day until they saw a violet and silver portal swirling ahead. Without a second thought, this time, they jumped inside. All three of them landed in the alleyway mere minutes from the time they left. Neve was in her normal clothes again, jeans and a plain purple t-shirt. Alice helped her up off the ground and the girls looked at one another silently. Alice smiled sheepishly. It's a falling day today. Welcome to the club, she said cheerily. Neve returned her smile. I'm really sorry for causing so much trouble. I just started feeling so overwhelmed and... Then I found this apple, and it's like I could hear it in my head. It was telling me what to do and how to do it. It felt powerful, and I guess that was nice for once. But then, well, it was more powerful than me. Hey, I've been there. Really, I have. You're not alone. Also, it may seem like other people have it together, but that's not true, Octavia said from atop a trash can. We all go through it from time to time, even us cats. Once I had the apple, once it had me, I felt lost. 
Neve looked down at her hands and then up at Alice and Octavia. Thank you for helping me get home. Our pleasure, Octavia said. I know I just created a different dimension, Neve said, looking at Alice. But I don't know if I'll ever get over the fact that you have a talking cat. Me either, to be honest. The three of them laughed, and Alice stepped forward to give Neve a hug. The two girls embraced, and then Neve gave Octavia a few scratches behind the ears. After walking and talking together for a bit, Neve said her goodbyes, splitting off to head to her house. What now then? Octavia said as she and Alice started on their own way. What now? Now I'm going to go home and shower and play video games and go to sleep. Alice glared at Octavia. No more portals! But I heard through the spellbinder grapevine that there is a white rabbit on the loose who keeps mumbling about time and... No! Alice interrupted. But it seems as though he keeps falling down this rabbit hole to another world and... Tomorrow, Octavia. Let's figure that one out tomorrow. Fair enough, said the cat. And hey, maybe we could just hang out with Neve. That sounds good too, purred Octavia. And with that decided, the two spellbinders walked side by side back to Ever After, another mission complete. The End Thanks for listening. 